Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. segment who's with VCE that now the entire solutions group from EMC now reports under Praveen uh, who's VCE but you're still Correct. an EMC employee. Can, Correct. can you explain to us a little bit about what that means from, from your standpoint? You're a 20-year veteran of EMC. Yep. Uh, solutions has moved around quite a few times. But yeah. what, what, what's this mean? Yeah, sure. No no problem. I mean, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, we've built solutions for a long time at EMC piecing together technologies. You know, you, you pick your server, you pick your storage, you pick your database, your network and we've done design and architectural recommendations, but what we're seeing a, a huge trend on is customers want to standardize their infrastructure, they want to converge um, infrastructure, and they want to do it not just for one database, but for multiple databases. So I think um, part of the organizational move that you mentioned is to help bring the expertise we've had traditionally in our group uh, to synthesize solutions and, and marry that with the vBlock architecture. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I think back 10 years ago, you know, the, the gold standard of the industry was probably like the IBM Red Books. Uh, you know, bake out the solution, make this huge documentation, right. and you say, here you go, good luck. Right. Um, and IBM Global Services will be more than happy to help you deploy that. Right. Um, you know, I, I think EMC, with what they're doing with VCE, you're almost trying to productize those solutions I, yeah. is, is a real successful way that you've been with vBlock and, and yeah. starting to take that through some of the other solution sets. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a good step, and I think um, there's other options out there for standardizing, but one of the advantages you see the vBlock is it's you get standardization, but you, you still give them open flexibility at the database layer and the application layer. They can choose what they want to run. You know, th they get standardization at the server network storage, even the hypervisor, um, but they have the option to deploy different applications, different workloads over time. So we try to give them a little bit of the best of the both worlds there. Yeah. And, and, and to be clear, your solution doesn't only run on you know VCE products. Uh, you, you build Correct. it, that might be preferred yes. from you, Stan. I mean, I, I know right. if you have your, your druthers, it's it's a vBlock with VMware and yep. you know all EMC stuff, but uh, you, there, there is choice. Yes, yes. Yep. So if, if I'm a customer and I'm yep. going to talk to you guys, do I get you know a, a DBA expert, an infrastructure expert, or is it an all-in-one package? Because we were talking yesterday at the DevOps day that this kind of new breed of expert where they've got multiple talents and skills. Is that the yeah. kind of people in your organization? That's a great question. I mean, so at the infrastructure level, yes, it's one it's one person, it's one standardized platform. Yeah. Um, the DBAs, you know, when we've been talking to them about yeah. this, it's important for us to let them know what offloading the infrastructure to the vBlock does for them. Yeah. They're not necessarily going to operate the vBlock, turn the knobs on the infrastructure. they might say, why are you talking to me about infrastructure? That's right. right. And you're saying, because we want to take that away from you, that pain. Yeah, I mean, we, we've done a lot of studies and talked to a lot of DBAs about what they spend their time on. And, right. you know, it, it's it's maintaining database performance, it's maintaining database availability, it's creating and maintaining copies. Um, it's not really tuning and optimizing infrastructure. And in fact, it, when you ask DBAs where they should, or they want to spend their time, it's really not doing that. Mm -hmm. So part of the beauty of the vBlock is to, to off offload all of that worry from them. They get a single platform, they get great performance, they get all things standardized, mm -hmm. and there is an effect there for the DBA. They might not feel it in their daily operations. You know, you take Oracle, they're running Enterprise Manager. They might not exactly um, feel that in their daily operations, but the side effects there and the, and the residual benefits are great. We've also integrated the vBlock into the, some of the databases. So right now, if you're an Oracle DBA, um, through Enterprise Manager, you can discover the vBlock through uh, system monitoring plugins that we've built with Oracle. So they can actually see all the way down into the vBlock architecture. From their pane of glass. From their pane wow, of glass, yeah, it's really great. And, and they can look at capacity, performance, availability information, all through their native console. So it makes them much more efficient at what they do. Um, when they call up the vBlock admin, they can be very prescriptive about what they're seeing and what they want to have happen. So we're trying to simplify that back and forth as well. So, yep. so Jason, you know, talk to us about a little bit about the customers and how they think about this overall. Because yeah. I, I think in the old days it was, you know, Oracle would try to get you know the entire red stack in there. Yep. Uh, EMC, uh, of course, you have the solutions, you have the vBlocks, and yep. 
you know, B-Block and B-Specs are also a piece of the cloud platforms that are on there. So, Correct, yeah. you know, the, the person that, you know, the, the line of business that does Oracle at the customer site, you know, are they interested in cloud? Are they, the, you know, can they make that gap or are we still kind of pulling them along that direction? Yeah, I think, I think when you look at Oracle's vision and our vision, at some level we're seeing the exact same thing and then other levels we're seeing two different things. Um, when it comes to the application owner, you made a great point. We have the exact same message in terms of we want to standardize that infrastructure. You, know, you take a bank, for example, they're in the banking business. They're not, you know, the application owner for those banking applications does not want to have to worry about infrastructure. So whether you're looking at our standardization approach or Oracle's, the goal is the same, to take that off their shoulders. When you get down to implementation, though, we have two very, very different visions. As you mentioned, Oracle's is designed for Oracle. Um, it's really, you know, they have an appliance or a, a box for everything. You have a big data appliance, an exadata. It's, it just goes on and on and on. The B-Block gives you the standardization, as I mentioned, but it's open, it's designed to run many, many different things. So our view of the data center, we think, is more aligned to what we see customers doing today. You know, 90% of our customers run more than Oracle, even if they run Oracle databases. So in a world where you only have Oracle, yeah, Oracle's vision does make a lot of sense, but if you run more than Oracle, if you run SQL, Exchange, SharePoint, other things, um, we think the VCE architecture is going to give you standardization, but also give you the flexibility you need. All right, so, so, yeah. so Jason, uh, you know, last year when we interviewed you, my CTO, David Floyer, yep. uh, w w was the co-host here. He's actually doing a lot of things at, at, the, uh, at the show here. He's going to be on a couple of the interviews, but, you yep. know, he's been saying for the longest time, you know, Flash is the biggest opportunity we have to really transform infrastructure yep. for database specifically. Correct. So give us the update. You know, how is Flash yeah. adoption happening? You know, some new products out there. Where are we with sure. it? Sure. Yeah, Flash is huge. I mean, it started years ago when we put flash drives in our storage platforms, and we saw great performance, low latency, you tiered your storage, you got more more IOPS with less capacity, less footprint, that was great. All flash is different, and a lot of people get it confused. It's not just about putting all flash drives in a, in a, in a box. It's actually about a ground up, revolutionary new architecture, and Extreme IO has been fascinating to learn about there. To net it out, it's all about simplicity for databases. Everything is just so much more simple when you use an all flash array. Um, it's the same performance, it's the same configuration, it's the same layout um, every time, no matter what the workload is. So are you, are you saying the age old question of you build it for capacity or performance is gone, or is that still there? Or? Yeah, I mean you have to factor capacity with the flash, mm -hmm. and you have to obviously look at um, you know your utilization rates and things like that, but yeah, we, we so feel... Always used to be a trade-off, right? So Absolutely. No. Yeah, you had a lot of trade-offs. Yeah. Think about snapshots and copies. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's uh, you know transformational about all flash is with Extreme I.O. you're doing your copies in memory. So you're not actually consuming and hitting disk. Everything's done in memory. Um, you know, you have to consume capacity as you change and modify the data, but that's no different than any other traditional architecture. So we're just seeing, um, it, it, I don't know if uh, the all flash arrays were built for databases, but when we've started applying them to, to databases, mm. they've been a uh, huge impact. Yeah, yeah so. especially if you even think about like, how do we manage test dev? Rather than giving right. somebody yeah. Uh, you know, just, oh, let's find the, the cheapest, oldest thing that we had sitting out there. Yeah. Uh, with with uh, the, the data services that we have with uh, All Flash, we can really, you know, do some interesting things. Yeah, that's huge for DBAs. You're right, it's a great point. You know, they, they everybody gets All Flash all the time. And um, I think people are starting to see the, the value of that and the effect, and, it, and it's, um, it's catching on with the DBAs very well. It yeah. must, they must change their role. I mean, you know, I mean, we, we saw yesterday talking to the developers how containers, um, are changing the way that they develop software because it's just so fast to do testing, yeah. build things up, knock them down. It must be the same with databases, right? To do, yeah. here's another huge copy of the database, there you go, really fast. Yeah, if I can create a, a, a test master and then recreate my copies yeah. on, on demand in seconds. In our group, we build solutions. We've done a lot of testing on this on Extreme IO. You know, we've taken a one terabyte or a 20 terabyte database, snapped it 64 times, for example, and it's instantaneous, consumes fast no copy. capacity. Yeah, so I mean, we really stress test when we build solutions at EMC to make sure that when we write up the architecture and give it to a DBA, they know what it's going to do. Um, it's not a marketing document, and we've had a lot of fun stress testing Extreme IO. It's it's been really impressive. Yeah. So, Jason, the two two solutions that you focus on the most when you talk about database. I mean, yeah. it's Oracle and it's Microsoft. Yeah. They've had huge push in the cloud yeah. uh, the last year or, or so. What impact is that having on what you're doing, what you're seeing in the customer base? Yeah, I mean, all of our customers are looking at the cloud in one fashion or another. Um, a lot of them are starting on-premise. They're, they're selectively looking at off-premise, so hybrid cloud is really what we focus on right now. We want to give them the flexibility to get to the cloud at the pace they want. 
And um, you know, back to the BBAs, we wanna make sure that we integrate deeply into Oracle and Microsoft. We have great relationships with both those companies now, so the DBAs will feel little impact. In fact, they'll still get to use all the things they love and, and they know today, um, even as they move to cloud architectures with databases, yep. Yeah. So the, the um, so when you talk about hybrid cloud, are you talking about extending databases into the cloud, or is it just the network infrastructure? Because I think hybrid yeah. cloud is a kind of often used term, isn't yes. it? And you know, we saw today on stage, it was about the uh, enterprise cloud, and we saw the federated. So in what, what bits do you touch? Well, you know, what, what do you really see when you? We, we focus on the database, the yeah, database, and, and the whether they're going to run the database on premise or selectively off site, yeah. and the options there. So it's kind of yeah. stretching the application and data across the cloud. That's correct. Say, yeah. And there's security issues that people worry about, and we've seen people be a little hesitant um, to move in that direction for some of their big mission critical databases, but it's growing and it's getting there. Yeah. And, and do you plug um, the databases into? A lot of the, I mean, we, we saw this morning on the keynote, the federated storage. Do, you, do, your, do your team spend much time plugging into RSA or into any of the other services? Because that's when it starts to get really yeah. big and... We do, we, we, we make sure everything we do is supported with you know the, the, the federation technology, such as RSA and security, that's big. And also leveraging the native protection technologies you might get with your database. Yeah. You know, again, it's, we see a lot of customers, you know, we offer a lot of things at EMC that help the database, yeah. but are similar to what the database has with it natively. So we want to be sensitive to that investment they've made in Oracle or SQL and use some of those things as they want to. Yeah. Can, you, can you commit to a timeline for an, uh, you know, we, <laughs> we always used to say we've been walking these early days, you know, purchase order, 30 days, it's yours kind of thing, uh, which sometimes was too fast for customers, right? Because <laughs> they're right. like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have this thing here. So, is it is it thirty days plus five now, or is it you know, or does it is from it, purchase it to deployment with with Oracle working and touching the cloud and all that? Hard, it's hard to commit to that <laughs> unless you really know the size and complexity of the database, of course, um, of and you know what their what applications they're moving on and things like that. And but we've seen you know very very fast turnaround times um, from you know start initial deployment, but once they're live, th then then the huge value comes in on the next application. Can you compare? Yeah. I mean, did did you? I think you said at the start that your team had done this without VBOX before, you know, putting yeah. the bits together. Yeah. Can you give like a, an example, is it twice as fast now for a project or, you know, any any kind of sense? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, th I think it's safe to say it's much faster. I, yeah. I don't know if it's twice as fast or right. three or four times as fast, but I mean, if you, if you don't have to uh, worry about designing the, the network and the storage and the operating system right. and, and all yeah. these things together, um, that's going to save you a tremendous amount of time. Yeah. And it depends on the expertise the customer has too. You know, some of our customers have been running EMC a long time. You know, they know this stuff cold and they're very fast and efficient at it. But a lot of customers um, that haven't done this before or if it's new technology, the VBlock's just a great way to simplify and accelerate it for them. Yeah. Um, and again, for the DBAs, it's just huge value when they want to stand up that next database mm -hmm. just to have it done immediately, whether it's in a VM or with a snapshot. Do you find, um Maybe customers might lean on you quite a bit. You know, if you if you've got all the brains to do this, you know what it's like when a customer realizes you've got some value. Right. They want to spend more time with you. Right? They do. <laughs> yeah. So so in our in our company, we have what's called specialist organizations for databases. Right. So we have an Oracle specialist team, a Microsoft specialist team. These are pre-sales experts. Many of them are from Oracle and Microsoft, and yeah, they're in high demand. And oftentimes, once they get meeting with a customer and they go through an implementation, that customer wants that them you know attached. Uh, for the for the future of the deployments, and you know we're really good about balancing it and working with the customers. Um, we learn a lot. You know that's where a lot of our best ideas for solutions come from. When we meet with a customer and hear how they did it, we go, "Geez, you know that that might be something that other people could use, and we should we should try to roll that into a solution and standardize it." So um, we really want to make sure that our our specialist teams are keeping up those relationships, and we're learning as we go. So, Jason, they started talking a little bit in the keynote about some modern applications. If you look at like the pivotal side of the federation, right. they're trying to drive a lot of those, you know, cloud native type things. Yes. Um, probably still pretty early days from the database standpoint, right. but you know, what are you seeing? What conversations are you having with customers about well, this? Well, open source is big um, in a couple of directions. Open source databases are gaining big traction. Um, you know, similar like we saw open yeah, source. Any specific ones you, you, you'd say are popping yeah. up more than others? Yeah, I mean Mongo, MongoDB we're seeing a lot of, and um, you know, it's similar to when Linux came into our world, right? Open source OS, and um, now you know you can get a lot of the same great functionality with open source, and people are looking at it for some of the smaller departmental, but we're going to see that accelerate. So we're definitely looking at solutions there. 
but also just, you know, if you look at Hadoop, Hortonworks, Cloudera, um, and data lakes, folding in unstructured data to traditional structured databases like Oracle and SQL, and how do I extract that data into one place, analyze it quickly, make decisions off of that, that's a new huge frontier for us for solutions. We're going to spend a lot of time on this year. That's kind of our next big thing. We'll keep up the standard solutions for Oracle and SQL, but um, you know, Oracle, SQL, plus Hortonworks, Cloudera, and other areas, Splunk, Analytics. Um, we just did some work on that this quarter. Really fascinating stuff when you look at um, you know, taking machine data, for example, and, and how do you analyze that, and what do you do with that information. Um, these are really new transformational forms of applications and data but it always going to be related back to our world of traditional databases. Um, so our goal is to build solutions that will en encompass all of these things together. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a renaissance in the application space. I mean, yeah. we've been at the Splunk.com for the last three years, yeah. uh, looking at companies like you know, Workday and ServiceNow, and of course Salesforce, yeah. um, you know, drastically changing things. So, uh, you know, Sam, what, what, what uh, I'm sorry, Jason, Sam's on next. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, what's what's top of mind for you? What what are kind of the, really the biggest challenges that uh, you know the, the DBAs are still facing that uh, that you're helping to address? I think their biggest struggle is just um, the gap between them and the infrastructure team. Every every DBA team we talk to, and sometimes we're in the same room. You have your storage team and your DBA team. They might not even know who each Shooting other. Shooting nerf guns at each other. Yeah, <laughs> nerf guns. <laughs> they might not even have met before. Um, we meet with them in a briefing situation. And, wow. Um, I think part of their struggle is, like you said, what does storage mean to me? Why does infrastructure matter? But then once we kind of give them some of that, it gets to, well, how do I take advantage of it? Yeah. And um, how do I better collaborate with my storage teams? What, what can I do there? So maintaining integration there is really important for us. Um, we have deep integration into Oracle, believe it or not, even though we're competitors in some spaces in SQL, we're going to maintain that. So um, I think to answer your question, DBAs is a big, big focus for us. Um, we're never going to take our eye off that in our world of solutions. But also the application owners are very, very important too. Um, you know, we have to have them understand the value of infrastructure. Again, it's so separated from them and it should be separated from them in their minds. Um, so we're trying to spend a lot of time with those people and, and, and really educate them. Really All right, yeah. So, Jason, I want to give you the final word. Uh, I, I know we've got a, a bunch of customers that will be talking on theCUBE. What, what are some of the highlights of the show here, uh, yeah. customers uh, in the database space that uh, people should yeah, I mean, read the case studies? We've had some like. great customers. So a couple big ones. Um, All Flash is huge. Obviously, Extreme IO, a lot of All Extreme IO customers. But also, we've put Extreme IO, as you know, into the V-Block. So now we have an All Flash V-Block. And we have a great customer coming on um, tomorrow, I think, uh, Volrap, who's going to talk about um, their experience moving from standard infrastructure to vBlock and then vBlock to all flash vBlock. So they've seen kind of the whole evolution of, you know, simplicity of architecture and then the added simplicity of all flash and what that can do. And they actually run mixed databases. They've got a little bit of Oracle, a little bit of SQL Server. So we're really looking forward to that. And um, we've tried to get as many customers here to talk to our other customers that are here. Um, that's the most value they can get. And uh, yeah, so far it's been great. So looking forward to, I'm looking forward to watching that one tomorrow. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Go to wikibon.com for all the research. Of course, you're watching theCUBE on siliconangle.tv. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest after a quick break.